Why do I do what I do when I know what I know? It's a common lament that I've heard. I can help you learn how to practice self-control. Stick with me to the end and you'll get some really powerful tips. First of all, lighten up. Okay, just give yourself a little bit of tolerance and compassion because this is probably more about being human than it is about being bad. As human beings, we have weaknesses. It's part of being a citizen of the planet. So let's expect that, let's accept that, and let's give ourselves a little bit of tolerance. What this does is it changes the energy and you're not under nearly as much pressure because if you're trying to not be a bad person, that's almost impossible to do in the face of our weaknesses. If you accept and acknowledge that everybody has weaknesses and you can be more tolerant and kind and forgiving and accepting toward yourself. In fact, just see if you can give yourself the same level of compassion and forgiveness that you're willing to give to other people. If you could start treating yourself that way, it would take off some of the pressure and you would be able to move forward a lot more powerfully in developing your self-control. Along with that acceptance and tolerance, let's get really honest about our weakness. You know what it is. Define it and understand it so that you don't put yourself in harm's way. If you're oblivious to your weakness, you're probably going to step right into danger. Understand what your weakness is embrace it in a way that allows you to say, you know what, that thing for me is a weakness. I'm not putting myself anywhere near that thing. We all know the classic example of a recovering alcoholic who decides to just go hang out at the bar with his friends for a little while. Oh, I won't drink. Really, if alcohol is your weakness, stay away from the bar. You with me? If pornography is your weakness, don't put yourself in a place where you're alone in a situation where you're going to be clobbered by it. Here's another example. I got a weak head. And what I mean is this part of my body is vulnerable. And if I'm riding my bicycle, I can choose to go with a helmet or without a helmet. Wearing the helmet doesn't make my head strong. It protects something that's already weak. And I won't even wear a helmet if I think, oh, I'm invincible. Well, it doesn't mean I'm invincible. It probably means I'm stupid. If I acknowledge my weakness, then I'll be humble enough to put the helmet on and protect the thing that's weak. That's why we have to acknowledge and accept what our weakness is. Whatever it is, accept it, acknowledge it and then don't put yourself in harm's way. I opened this video with one of the most common laments that I hear in my office. Why do I do what I do when I know what I know? Well, it's because I'm human. I have weaknesses, right? It's also really helpful to understand our own motivation. We do things or don't do things primarily because of two human motivators, pleasure and pain. Of the two, which one do you think is more powerful in changing your behavior? Now, I'm pathologically positive. I wanted to believe it's pleasure. Of course, we're going to do things because it makes us feel good. No, it's pain. Your brain is designed to protect you, to keep you alive. And because of that, your brain will do more to avoid pain than it will do to seek pleasure. This is important to understand. When we ask the question, why do I do what I do when I know what I know? The answer could come down to pleasure and pain. Whether we change or we don't, we're going to have both pleasure and pain either way. The problem is a lot of times something that represents a weakness for us can bring us immediate pleasure or we can immediately avoid some pain. What we're really after is a more long term benefit. Eventually what's going to bring me the most pleasure. Eventually what's going to bring me the most pain. When we get clear about that, 
We overcome what I call a psychological hurdle in our own mind that has us avoiding the things that would ultimately be good for us or indulging in the things that hurt us because of the immediate effects. Drugs are a really great example. You introduce a drug to your system and you immediately get an effect, right? But long term, that's not so good for you. What if we could do things that would bring about a long term good feeling? You know, like exercising or engaging in some productive activity. See, that doesn't bring it immediately. Yeah, you get some good feelings, but it's more of a long term effect. So understanding our own motivation and the pleasure and pain dynamic, that's huge in helping us to gain self-control. One final tip for you. Do you remember when I told you to lighten up? Try to make this a little less cumbersome in your own mind. Here's something that'll help with that. Celebrate your successes. Give yourself some kind of a little reward. And sometimes we have to artificially introduce additional pleasure earlier in the process because what we're working on is such a long-term thing. So if you have a little win, give yourself a little reward. Celebrate it. Have some fun with it. Oh, and while you're doing that, plan for relapse. Oh, what a downer, Dr. Paul. Really? You're going to go there? Yes, I'm going to go there. I said plan for relapse because most people cave in again to their weakness. You know this already, don't you? Because you probably have. Yeah, plan for it. And I don't mean plan to do it, the relapse. I mean plan for it. What are you going to do when it happens? Because I think you have a couple of choices here. Let's say you cave into your weakness. You've been doing really good and then you cave into it again and you beat yourself up for it. And you say, see, Look how stupid I am, or some other terrible word that's prohibited in your home. You could do that. You could beat yourself up or you could plan for relapse so that when it happens, you say, oh, there it is again. What can this teach me about my weakness? How is it that I might have put myself into harm's way again? What elements of my self-care was I not doing that made me more vulnerable to the cave-in. You see, you could do that with it instead. Use relapse as a learning opportunity and recommit yourself to that self-control that you are developing and that's getting stronger all the time. This is all about how to practice self-control for yourself. You can apply these things to your kids. I did another video about how to teach your child self-control you can click to that one next and apply some of those ideas to yourself as well. Hope you find that helpful.